So, about a month ago, I went into the topic of which Daedric Prince could possibly play a huge role in The Elder Scrolls VI. Now, it's an interesting topic, but given how much I got sidetracked, I kept saying, I'll do it here, I'll do it there, but I, I hate procrastinating. I realize now I'm not going to put a date on anything anymore, but I will keep projects in mind. So, this video is going to be dedicated to which Daedric Prince could possibly play a major role in Elder Scrolls VI, given how every other Elder Scrolls up to this point has had a Daedra involved in the main plot in some way, or at least in the DLCs. Skyrim was the exception, given how it was about Alduin, but Hormaeus Morris still technically had a major role in the DLC Dragonborn, and of course, there have been many other DLCs that in the Elder Scrolls games as well as other games that were centered around other Daedric Princes. A good example of this is the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, which was centered around the Daedric Prince Zora. Uh, the DLC for that game, Blood Moon, was also centered around the Daedric Prince Hercene. And then you had Oblivion, which was centered around uh, Mehrin's Dagon, as well as the Shivering Isles DLC that was centered around Shea Gorath. So what I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of Daedric Princes out there that tend to get involved in the game plots when it comes to the Elder Scrolls. And the whole point of this video, as well as the one that came before it, is to see which ones might make an appearance based off of whether or not they've appeared in previous games, or whether or not the plot will match up for the area that they're in. So the first Daedric Prince we are going to be talking about today is Meridia. A new hand touches the beacon. See, Meridia has not made a major appearance in any of the Elder Scrolls stories before. She's always showed up as a little side Daedric quest that you can do since Daggerfall, but she hasn't played much of a role. So what does Meridia do? She is the Daedric Prince of Twilight. She is associated with the energies of the living, and she despises all undead. Her artifacts are the Dawnbreaker and of course the Ring of the Khajiidi, which isn't as popular as the Dawnbreaker, but is still a very interesting artifact and maybe one day will deserve its own video. The interesting part about Meridia is that she actually really wasn't a Daedra at first until she was kicked out of Aetherius. Now she doesn't really have that many interesting factors to her. She has a couple of cool things like she had a couple interesting tidbits back in Daggerfall but since then she's become more of a very basic Daedra. She's pretty decent, she's not evil, she has no intention of taking over the world, and she likes the living. Though she does have a big distaste towards the undead, she's actually been known to give immortality to followers of hers that are extremely loyal. If someone defiles her temples, someone makes a fool of her, someone spreads undead and darkness anywhere, she will get very upset, and she will ask those who worship her to immediately dispose of whatever is causing issues. I don't really see how she could play that much of a role in any of the future Elder Scrolls games, though there are sure to be some reasons that we're just not aware of yet. I do know that she played somewhat of a major role in the Knights of the Nine DLC. She actually managed to give the main antagonist immortality, which made him extremely difficult in dealing with. But besides that, she hasn't really played much of a role outside of that, and we could see her return and kind of make a major appearance in the next Elder Scrolls game, if not, you know, maybe the next DLC or so for it. Personally, I really don't see her making a major appearance. It's just my opinion, I could be wrong. But I really don't think there's that many reasons that she would make a major appearance in the main plot. She would probably make a major side quest, but that's about it. So next on the list is going to be Namira. Namira is the Daedric Prince of all those things that are just lit, you know, like bugs and death and... Dark and bleh. That's basically what she is. I know it's a bad description, but it's the truth. Namira isn't really that big of a Daedra. Yeah, she sure she plays a big role, but she doesn't really have that much to her name, and nor does she really have a lot of events that have been taken in her name. She doesn't really seem to get out that much. Doesn't really have that many things that have happened in the Elder Scrolls lore, at least none that's been recorded. I really couldn't find that much information on her. Though, I would say she's basically the opposite of uh, Meridia. She likes light and and living things and colorful, beautiful things. Whereas, Namira just doesn't care for any of that. She's more of a dark, disgusting, I like creepy crawlies and the dark and everything that resides that is unappealing. That's basically what Namira is. And I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't find any information. She could play a major role, 
And it would be a perfect opportunity to expand upon her, I could say that. If she made a major appearance in The Elder Scrolls VI and she was part of the main plot, it would be interesting because then it would give her a reason to actually be important. Because as it stands, there's really not that many things she's done. Funnily enough, she actually didn't make an appearance at all in Morrowind, so that means that she has even less stuff to her name. She didn't even get an appearance in one of the most popular games in the franchise, and... Well... That just goes to show that there's not that much on her. She didn't have any major events in that game. She wasn't. She hasn't had her own game or DLC plot line just dedicated to her. So hey, who knows? Maybe Bethesda will give her her own little adventure or her own little story this time around. If not through the main quest, maybe a DLC. But she could be related to the plot in the way of maybe she just wants to mess things up. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. We'll just see how it plays out. Okay, so we go from a Daedra that has literally no information I could really find on her to one that is probably the most interesting one yet, one of the at least, and has a very big chance of being the next Elder Scrolls game. It would be a very amazing thing to focus on, whether it be a DLC or a game. I'm go of course, I'm going to be referring to Perryite. So whereas, like I said, Namira didn't really have that many more interesting things to her that could make a huge plot, Periite is literally the embodiment of, like, diseases and order. He is one of the most... I, I suppose you could say he's not the weakest, but he is... I guess he is considered the weakest, but he's also one of the most ambitious and busy Daedra of them all. He's in charge of keeping these things, I believe... They're, they're like the embodiment of chaos or something is what the word is. I can't remember what they're called. Daedrons. He's in charge of keeping Daedrons, which are chaotic creation made sentient from the exertion of Daedra or mortal will, from causing damage to oblivion. He's able to basically keep them at bay, and like the best part about the whole thing is that apparently no one feels sorry for him, so he has even more reason to actually do something as of the next game, or at least be in charge of a DLC or something. Because as we see him in Skyrim, he's clearly busy and he has a lot of things he's trying to do, but he definitely could be plotting something or trying to do something. Nobody really pays attention to Perrier and nobody really cares about him. So it would be the perfect opportunity for someone with that much power and that much ability, despite how weak he is compared to everybody else, to just stand up and show the others like, hey, I'm one of you. So next we go from Perriite to Sanguine. I'm just gonna say it. He hasn't made a major appearance in the plot of any of the Elder Scrolls games or a DLC and there's a reason for that and it's the reason I don't think he's going to be a major player in the Elder Scrolls 6 that is a sanguine doesn't care about anything he just wants to get drunk have a party and have the mortals around him just do a bunch of crazy stuff he's one of the less evil Daedra and just one of the more fun interesting Daedra if you played Skyrim or Oblivion or even Morrowind, you know that his quests are just funny little pranks and antics that he's trying to do. And it's really cool. He's actually a really nice guy. He's one of the Daedra you could sit down with and be like, Yeah, hey, you want to get a drink? He'd be like, Hell yeah. And he just, just want to get a drink. That's it. He actually, in Skyrim, makes you do a drinking competition. And you go through this quest that's basically the Hangover movies. Where you're just trying to remember what you did. And then you find him and he gives you his staff. And he's like, yeah, here, sorry for your trouble. Here's a cool staff that will summon Daedra for you. And he just lets you go. And that's it. Don't think he's going to make a major appearance in The Elder Scrolls 6, though I do look forward to his quest. It is actually... His quests are probably one of the most fun in all of The Elder Scrolls games when it comes to Daedra quests. And I just cannot wait to see what his is. Wow, we are almost done. This is not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Okay. Now we go from Sanguine, who is already a very interesting Daedra, to Sheogora. <laughs> This guy is everybody's favorite Daedra. He's my favorite Daedra. He's one of the best DLCs. And yes, uh, that sadly means he probably won't make an appearance in The Elder Scrolls VI because he already appeared in his own DLC dedicated to him in Oblivion called The Shivering Isles. It is probably one of my favorite expansions in all of The Elder Scrolls lore only because it is just so awesome. It has one of the most interesting Daedras in it. it, has one of the most interesting and colorful landscapes created for a game, and is just so god dang funny, interesting, and very creative. Jeez, for everyone! If you haven't played it, go check it out, but that's really it. We just, I don't really think Sheagorath is going to make a major appearance in the story of Elder Scrolls 6, but you definitely will show up as a Daedric Prince side quest, and I am just looking forward to that one as well. 
Because in Skyrim, his was very interesting. You use the Wabajack to just do a bunch of crazy interesting puzzles. Mostly just involving you shooting the Wabajack at different objects or trying to solve these things. But they do take you a couple minutes to figure out. It just makes you feel that much more interesting when you solve them. It's kind of kind of creative and I like it. And of course, since we're talking about Shea Gorath, I gotta talk about Jigalag. Jigalag, from my knowledge was just another form of Shea Gorath, which technically he was. If you played the Shivering Isles DLC, you know that once every era, Shea Gorath transforms into Jigalag. I'm sorry for any spoilers. I should have probably put a spoiler warning there, but whatever. I do know for a fact that Jigalag was indeed Shea Gorath. Once every era, like I said, the Grey March, an event in which Jigalag returns to the Shivering Isles to wreak havoc, destroy everything that has ever happened or everything that's ever been created by Shea Gorath in the realm, he makes his appearance, destroys everything, and then turns back into Shea Gorath and Shea Gorath recreates everything. During the end of the Third Era, the Daedric Prince of Madness, Shea Gorath, basically just summons in someone, or more should I say, invites someone from the Plain of Mundus, who is the champion of Cyrodiil, or the hero of Kavach, and they come through and decide to help out Shea Gorath and stop the Grey March. Shea Gorath puts it plainly, he just doesn't want to deal with recreating everything, and he said, I kind of want this whole thing to be over, so whatever. He invites the champion of Cyrodiil to do all his work for him, to try and prevent the Grey March from really occurring, which he does end up succeeding in doing, and in turn, actually becomes the new Shea Gorath. This is like a new, like a mantling, sort of. It's very peculiar, but it's the same sort of process that happened that created Talos, if you watched my Ebony Warrior theory. It's interesting, because Jigalag, at this point, after the hero of Kavach actually defeats him, is freed from his curse. Once each era, I was allowed my true form, conquering this world anew. And each time I did, the curse was renewed, damning me to exist as Sheagorath. Now, though, you have ended the cycle. You now hold the mantle of madness, and Jigalag is free to roam the voids of oblivion once more. He is no longer forced to become Shea Gorath, as the new Shea Gorath is the champion of Cyrodiil, or the hero Kavach, whichever you want to refer to him or her as. It's just really cool, because it means that Jigalag is out there, though technically, no one has talked about him since, since Bethesda may have just forgotten about him, but I highly doubt that he's going to stay unimportant forever. I feel like Jigalag is going to return one of these days, and he is going to have his revenge, and Elder Scrolls 6 could be a good opportunity for that to happen considering the success and popularity of the Shivering Isles DLC. So who knows, maybe Jigalag will return, and maybe he will be a major player in the DLC or the main story of the Elder Scrolls 6. Okay, so I realize I forgot to talk about Nocturnal, but to quickly summarize Nocturnal, because I'm gonna be honest, I don't think she's going to show up in Elder Scrolls 6. Nocturnal is the Daedric Prince of Night, Shadow and Thievery. She is one of the main headish figures of the Thieves Guild, and we figured this out in Skyrim as she actually has her own, or she doesn't have her own quest, but she's extremely tied to the Thieves Guild quest, which is a major quest in the game. So I'm not entirely sure if that counts, but I know that she was given a big spotlight there. And because of that, we got a lot of information in the lore on the Nightingales, and that was honestly just a huge huge lore drop and a big addition into the, well, Thieves Guild-esque lore and Daedric lore of the Elder Scrolls, so I don't think she's going to make a huge appearance, though she might play a huge role in the Thieves Guild moving forward, but that's about the most I think she's going to be seen. Okay, so the last Daedric Prince we're going to be talking about is Vermina. She doesn't have much information to her, she's the Daedric Prince of Nightmares and Dreams, the interesting part about her is that she didn't make an appearance in Morrowind, just like Namira. And honestly, she doesn't have a lot of information to her either. She has made an appearance. Her artifacts are the Skull of Corruption and the Orb of Vermina. She could play a role in Elder Scrolls 6, but I really, again, I don't see how she could. A DLC, definitely. But I don't think a lot of these guys are really main story material. 
They don't feel like they're going to invade Tamriel. Perry was the closest I think we got to it. But Vermina doesn't seem like she's going to invade anybody besides, you know, invading someone's dreams. <laughs> That's about it. She doesn't really have that much power. She has her own realm of oblivion called Quagmire and the Dream Stride, but that's about it. She doesn't seem to have that much influence over the realm of men and Myrrh, and I highly doubt she's going to make a major appearance. Okay guys, that looks like that's all the Daedric Princes. That's all I could find. I, if you guys, if you guys know of like one more besides like Umbra or something, now, I know Umbra is technically a Daedric Prince. I should have probably mentioned her, but there really isn't much to her besides the book, and I might make my own video on her anyway. Um, honestly, there isn't many other options out there for anything Daedric-wise that might make an appearance again. I know that we saw Hermaeus Mora. Like I said in the last one, he could possibly play a role, but he already played a major role in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, at least in TLC Dragonborn. And honestly, I felt bad because a lot of these ones that I actually ended up looking into didn't have a lot of major roles in the Elder Scrolls games, which is kind of sad. But at the same time, I could see why they're just not that interesting. So unless Bethesda manages to insert them into Elder Scrolls 6 and makes their story more interesting, uh, then I highly doubt that they're going to play a major role in the story for it. If you guys know something I don't, feel free to let me know. I don't know everything about the Elder Scrolls. There are some things that are just so out there that I haven't found them yet, and I love learning about them and doing topics and videos on them, but if you guys know, that's the reason why I like having the comment section. You guys are awesome, and you guys are intelligent, you guys know this stuff, and I learn so much from you guys as much as I try to show you guys as much as I can. So let me know. If you guys have any topics for theories or anything in the future, put them down in the comments, email me, let me know on Twitter, let me know on Discord, anything. I love making videos on topics that you guys send me, and I give you guys credit and everything, but if not, that's perfectly fine. I'm happy with you just watching this video. I'm sorry it took so long to make this video. I felt so bad that it took a month. I thought it had only been like 2-3 weeks, but because of the renovations and everything, I looked at my phone and saw when, how long ago that it had been posted, and I was like, a month? Holy crap. But now that I have the chance to finally sit down and record after all of the renovations and nonsense, I'm sitting down and recording and it's done. It's off my chest. I gotta work on the Daggerfall video. That one's been in development for two to three months now. So yeah. Until the next video, guys. I hope you guys have a nice day, night, evening, morning, wherever you guys are at. And say it with me now. Play well, eat well, and of course, love all friends. I hope you guys go out there and strive to break infinity.